What's up guys, in today's tutorial I'm going to teach you how to create a blood splatter decal material and implement gameplay logic to fire a weapon at an enemy, leaving a blood splatter on the enemy and the wall behind it. You are not going to want to miss this tutorial, it is full of useful knowledge to help level up your skills in Unreal Engine 5. Let's jump in. So to get started, let's talk about the relationship between the assets that we're going to need to implement this logic. We're going to create four key assets. We're going to create a dummy, which represents our AI. Later, you can implement your own AI with this logic, but first, let's just use this dummy and keep it simple. We're going to create a gun. Again, you can use your own weapon later. For now, let's just create this new one, which we'll equip to the player. The interface, uh, blueprint interface, which will communicate between the weapon and the shot enemy and we'll create a blood splatter decal. We'll create these in the order of decal, blueprint interface, uh, dummy, gun, and then we'll implement the gun onto the player. Uh, and then when we're done, it's gonna look like this. So we can shoot at the enemy and it's gonna leave blood splatters on the wall behind it. All right, let's jump in. All right, so let's create our assets. We're gonna go to our content drawer and we're gonna right click we'll create a new blueprint of type actor. We'll call this BP underscore dummy to shoot. We're going to right click again, create a new blueprint of class actor. We'll call this BP underscore simple gun. I'll right click. I'm going to go to blueprint and then blueprint interface. I'll call this BPI underscore damage interface. I'm going to right click again and I will create a new material and we'll call this M underscore decal underscore blood splatter. All right, so let's get started with our blood splatter. So I'm going to double click. All right, so now that we have our graph open, the first thing we're going to do is on the left here, we're going to change the material domain to deferred decal. And we're going to change the blend mode to translucent. We're going to right click into our graph and we're going to type constant three vector. We're going to right click this and we're going to say convert to parameter. We're going to type color. This is going to be the color of our blood splatter. We're going to go down here and change our default value to a dark red color like that. We're going to hit OK. We're going to drag this white pin, which is the RGB, over to our base color. We'll now see this colored red in our preview panel. And we're going to right click out here and we're going to say uh, scalar parameter. We're going to call this roughness min. And we're going to control C, control V. We're going to call this roughness max. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag off here. We're going to type lerp at our linear interpolate math node. We're going to drag this in here into the B. And we need an alpha map. So you could use something different if you want, but I'm going to use the same texture that I'll use for my alpha map. So I'm going to right click. Uh, I'm going to say texture sample. And I'm going to go down here and I already have a black and white map that I'll use for my splatter. So I'm going to type decal and find that. You can drag yours in uh, or search for it there. And so this is going to be my sort of splatter map. Uh, this one has a proper alpha. Um, you could use one that is black and white, but I'll use the alpha here and drag this in here. If you're not familiar with the lerp material node, you can check out this video above to learn more. And we'll drag this into roughness. In this situation, um, it's not going to show us first of all, because we need to set the values. So let's change this from zero to 0.1 and then change this to 0.3. This is going to show better if you're using kind of a, uh, like a noise map or something, but just want to have this here in case you want to add variation in the future. Let's change this to 0.2. Um, it's a little better. So now what we'll do is we're going to use this same texture sample and we're going to drag off and we'll say multiply and we're going to drag off this B and we are going to say decal lifetime opacity. So what happens right now is because this is at like the lifetime of this decal and it's going to show live in editor. Um, when you drag this in, it's going to disappear. Uh, I think there's some preview settings that you can use to adjust that. But for right now, what we're going to do is to immediately visualize this. We're just going to look at that. 
and when you set this to the plain preview mode, we'll see this blood splatter immediately. So I think uh, 0.2 is a little too much, so let's change this to like 0.4. It's good enough for now. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use a normal map to add a little bit of depth and variation to this. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say texture sample. And I know that with the starter content, there's a few normal maps that are good enough for what we need. So I'm gonna type uh, normal, actually I lied, I'm gonna type moss because I like this one. So I'm gonna grab this moss normal. And basically what this is is we open this up, we just see there's a little bit of variation which makes it not so flat. So right here we can see this is really flat and we're gonna add some normal to make this not so flat. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say constant three. And in these constant values on the right, I'm gonna type 0 0.5, 0 0.5, one. And this purple is the like flat normal which we can use to change the amount of uh, intensity we want for this normal material. So. I'm going to type lerp, get the linear interpolate node again, uh, drag this RGB value into the B. I'm going to pull off this alpha and I'm going to say scalar parameter. And I'm going to call this normal intensity. And I'm going to set this value to 0.75. And I'm going to drag the output of this lerp into our normal right up here. And then we'll immediately see some sort of bumps on this. And if we now, let's let's save this. And I'm gonna go back to my map and I'll drag this straight into the environment. We can see how um, there's a little bit of dimension now to this map where if I go back to my material and I change the intensity of this normal to, um, let's see, one. Um, it's gonna be completely flat because it's using this flat color. So I'm gonna go back here and that just looks kind of lame. So it's nice to have that little bit of normal. I think you'll also recognize that it makes it really pop. So I'm gonna change this value to 0.75 so we get a little bit of that normal from this texture map. Now that we know what it looks like, um, we're gonna drag this multiply into the opacity and we'll see it fade away. I think if you use some of the sort of real time settings, um, we won't see that. But for right now, we're just going to uh, you know, say that we know what it looks like and we can see it here in editor, uh, but it does fade away right here when we plug this in. So now uh, let's add some gameplay logic. Okay, let's go to our content drawer and we're going to click into our BPI damage interface, double click. And then in the top right, we can see it gives us the option now to add a new function. Uh, I'm going to call this do damage to hit actor. And so basically this is what we're going to use when we fire the gun and we determine that an enemy can be damaged We're going to use this interface to apply damage to that enemy And if you're not familiar with blueprint interfaces, you can click this video above to learn more um, All right, so that's actually all we, re we need right here in the future If you wanted to tap into an enemy's health You could use this interface to communicate with that and say how much damage you've done to that enemy But for now, this is all we need so now what we're going to do is let's go to our dummy to shoot. Um, I'm going to, so right now, you know, all this dummy is, and in the future, you'd use your own AI. You'd use, you know, a skeletal mesh. This dummy is actually just sort of a collection of spheres. So it's our little marshmallow man. These are all just spheres, which I've scaled to make it look like a human. Um, so, you know, you can add a sphere and then go to your viewport and you know what I did is literally just you know control C control V you know scale this kind of stuff to make our little human in this instance I'm gonna copy it in and you can take a second to um, create those spheres uh, on your own right now I'm just gonna use this it's just a static mesh you could put it, uh, for now just use a static mesh similar it could be like this or just a cylinder um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my class settings up here on the top panel and then I'm going to go over in the right side of my screen and I'm going to go to where it says implemented interfaces and I'm going to hit add and then we need to recall now the name of our blueprint interface we've just created which is BPI damage interface. So right here I'm going to type under add BPI damage 
interface. All right, so there we go. BPI damage interface. So now uh, I've compiled this and we also want to uh, save and compile that before anything. So compile, save, and once we've compiled and saved it, uh, we'll see that this interface pops up in the left. So when we want to do damage to our enemy, we want to subtract health or, you know, play a, a reaction montage. We'd use this interface to execute that logic. So now what we're going to do uh, is we're going to create the logic on our gun. We'll first create our gun and then we'll attach it to our player and then we'll put the logic in. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll go into our gun blueprint. I'm going to double click to open it up. And I'm going to add a cube. And similar to the other, uh, the dummy mesh, my gun is just a cube. Um, and I'm going to scale this to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0.4. I'm going to press Control C and I'm going to click on my default scene route and I'm going to Control V. I'll move this up in space a little bit. I'm just going to turn off my snap and I'm going to scale this in this direction. Look at that. This is, uh, you know, we're not going to call this art. It is just a, uh, you know, for a prototype. I'm going to control C, control V again. Um, and just add this tiny little detail up top. So it kind of looks more like a plausible weapon. So something like that. And we'll select all of these and we'll change the material. There's some starter content metal materials. So we will use chrome. How about that? So now we have this beautiful chrome weapon, uh, and that is the base of our weapon. And what we're going to do now is we will add an arrow. So under add, we're going to add an arrow component up here. And make sure this is attached to the default scene route. Right now, we're just going to have all of these attached to the default scene route, not sort of nested into each other. And we're going to drag this arrow out, and we'll put it right in front of the barrel of the gun facing this way. Awesome. So now, <clears throat> before we actually add the logic to the gun, we're going to equip this um, to our player. So I'm going to compile and I'll save. And then I'm going to, in my content drawer, I'm going to type third person character and I'm going to open up this blueprint. Okay, so once we've opened up our character, we're going to want to go to the event graph. We're going to right click and we're going to say left mouse button. This is going to be the, the event that when we click our le left mouse key or you could do other keys if you have some other functionality there. But for right now, let's just use left mouse button. And we're going to want to do the functionality that the gun has. So what we're going to do is we're going to add at the very top left a child actor. And we're going to call this gun. Uh, we'll call this weapon. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to drag off and we're going to pull off here. And we're going to say uh, get child actor. And we're going to say cast to BP underscore simple gun. Um, actually, yeah, what we're going to do is... Uh, and so assuming this is valid, we're going to promote this to a variable. We'll call this gun reference. And then right here in just a few minutes is where we're going to fire the weapon. So what we're going to do now is that we have this gun reference. What we're going to do is we're going to pull this off here. We'll say get gun reference. We're going to right click and we'll say convert to validated get. And we'll say on pressed, we're going to test if it's valid. And if it's not valid, uh, we're going to we're going to create a reference to it. So this is basically the first time around. You could do this on begin play or when you equip a weapon. Um, but basically, this prevents us from having to do this multiple times. So right up here is once we add the gun functionality where the gun is going to fire. But just wanted to create these hooks uh, so we can see it in our blueprint. Now let's go to our viewport and recognize that we added a child actor, but we didn't assign a class. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
um, take our simple gun. We're going to use the magnifying glass right here to find it in the content drawer right there. And then in our third person uh, character blueprint, we're going to select our weapon. We're going to go over to child actor class. And we're going to hit this little gray arrow. So now we see this giant gun pop up uh, in front of the player and it's going to be attached to the player's capsule. So from the get-go, if we want, we can play from here and in our game, we're going to see our giant gun that moves as the player moves. When we left mouse click, nothing happens yet, but it's about to. 